turn to Psalm 23. Well known Psalm, the Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie on pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. Let's bow together in a word of prayer and seek God's blessing upon our coming together this evening. Our gracious God and eternal Heavenly Father, we come into thy holy presence in Jesus' precious name. We bow before thee, the one that is holy and righteous and almighty, and we come to praise thee and to thank thee for all that thou hast done on the cross of Calvary to save sinners such as us. And we thank thee that thou art the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed three in one. And we come to worship thee and to praise thee and to seek thy face for thy blessing upon us in this service even tonight. We thank thee for each one that has been enabled to leave their homes and has the health and strength to leave and come to the house of God tonight. And we ask thee to bless each one that has come, bless each one that is saved by God's grace, that they might know the presence of the Lord with them each moment throughout the service. For those that are not saved, we pray that you will come and open their hearts and save them by thy mighty power. Those that are listening online, Lord, and sitting at home, we pray that they might know the hand of God upon them as well, and that they might know the blessing of God in their lives. 
And if they're not saved, that you will open their hearts and they might come and put their trust and faith in thee. For any that are cast down and feeling the heat and the burden of the days in which we live, we pray that you will put your loving arms around them and draw them unto thyself, and they might know that help that cometh from thee and from thee alone. And I ask you that you will come and touch any that are ill, lay thy healing hand upon them and restore them to health and strength again. Those that were prayed for today that uh, have lost loved ones, we pray that they might know that comfort that cometh from thee and from thee alone. And we pray, Lord, that you will come and touch each one connected with the congregation here at this time. Bless the Reverend Greg and continue thy hand upon him and that he might know the hand of God upon him even at this time. And we ask thee, Lord, that you will come and touch all our ministers, students, and laymen, and all faithful preachers of the gospel that are true to the blood and to the book tonight, as they take up the word of God in different places across the land and down in the south and across in the mainland. We pray that there might be a moving of God, the Holy Spirit, again upon us that will bring men and women under conviction of sin and draw them out of sin's darkness into God's marvelous light. We ask thee now that you will continue with us and keep thy hand upon us in Jesus' precious and lovely name. Amen. We're turning to another hymn at this stage, 439. I have a shepherd, one I love so well. How he has blessed me, tongue can never tell. On the cross he suffered, shed his blood and died that I might ever in his love confide. Following Jesus ever day by day, nothing can harm us when he leads the way. Darkness or sunshine, whate'er befall, Jesus the shepherd is my all in all. We'll stand again while we sing, please.
would ask your sister Amy Hill now to come and sing for us at this stage of our meeting. Amen. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, though tossed about With many a conflict, many a doubt Fighting and fears within, without O Lamb of God, I come, I come Just as I am, ooh, I come, ooh, just as I am, O Lamb of God, I come, just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come, I come.
Sister, for those messages and song, and we trust the Lord will bless them to our hearts. We would ask Lavelle to come now and make the necessary announcements, please. Good evening, everyone. Welcome along to our evening gospel service. Good to see you here. Uh, if you're visiting with us, then we give you a special welcome. And for those tuning in online as well, good to have you uh, in our meeting. Good to have Ronnie back with us this evening. We enjoyed his ministry this morning. We thank him for stepping in at relatively short notice to cover for the Reverend Gray. Uh, and we thank Ronnie for doing that. I want to thank Amy for singing as well. And we'll give her a wee plug now at this stage. There are a few of her CDs still out in the hall there. So if you would like one of her CDs, then take a CD and put your name down uh, on the list there. The announcements, Lord willing, for the rest of the week are as follows. Tuesday at 8 p.m. is the midweek meeting. And this week, taking the form of a deputation meeting on behalf of the radio ministry, Let the Bible Speak, and the Reverend David Smith will be here to speak. There will be a retiring offering to support the work of LTBS. Uh, please note, Little Treasures is off now until um, Wednesday the 27th of April. So please remember, no toddler group for the next two weeks with the Easter break. But that doesn't mean that you don't pray for the toddler group, parent and toddler group. Daphne was telling me this week there are 102 children registered with our toddler group this year. So that's absolutely amazing. There's about 70 come on a regular basis. So what an outreach it is amongst the toddlers, Daphne and the team that help. Uh, we really appreciate the efforts that they make uh, reaching those uh, young families. So please remember uh, the parent and toddler group in your prayers. Young people, as we said this morning, no meeting this Friday night, but on Saturday night you're going to join with the Macrofelt young people at their meeting. Bus leaving at 10 to 5 sharp. Um, please let Claire know if you're going and also uh, what you want for your tea because you're stopping for tea on the way to Macrofelt. So please uh, remember that and do that as soon as possible. Parents are reminded that the bus will be back around 
quarter past 11 on Saturday night. Next, next Lord's Day meetings commence with Sunday school and Bible classes at 10.30 a.m. The services in the church here at 11.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Both meetings preceded by the half hour of prayer. Uh, Reverend Gray hopefully will be back with us next Lord's Day, so continue to remember him in your prayers as he recovers uh, from surgery. Keith and Karen Lindsay will be along to sing at the evening service next Lord's Day. Please remember next Lord's Day as well is the commencement of the first of our, of our open air meetings for the spring and summer time, meeting at 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. at the top of the town here in Tandragee. So if you can come along for a few minutes, stand with us or even help out, well, that would be greatly appreciated. It won't be a long meeting, but the open air is also a vital witness and a vital outreach for our congregation here. Remember, the Ukraine aid appeal is still open if you want to donate to that. The Easter Convention and the Martyrs this year, Friday night at 8 p.m. That's Good Friday. That'll be a missionary stroke youth rally. And then Easter Monday at 7. And again, parents are reminded there will be a kids club available at that Easter Monday night meeting in the Martyrs. Mission Board have organized a missionary conference starting on the 7th of May for one week in our Lisburn church. And we'll have more details for that very soon. Uh, Sam Houston CDs. DVD still available, list on the table in the link as you leave. Uh, there's a minibus running to the Answers in Genesis meeting on Saturday, the 23rd of April. If you would like to go, as we said this morning, it's primarily for their young people, but not exclusively. If you would like to go and there's room, then you see uh, Mr. Alistair Hill. These are all the announcements we'll hand back to Ronnie. Good to be back with you this evening again, and we trust the Lord will bless us. We thank you for your fellowship and friendship over the years, and we ask that you will uh, pray for us tonight as we come again to God's precious word. Before that, we're going to sing together hymn 267, and then our sister will come and sing again for us before we turn to God's word. 267, I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me how he left his home and glory for the cross on Calvary. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints and glory gathered by the crystal sea. We'll stand again while we sing, please.
I've asked her sister Emily to come and sing again now for us, please. It's lovely to be back singing in my own church again. It's been quite a while um, since I've been here. Um, and it's the first time I've been singing here since I released my CD. And I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who's supported me um, and who's purchased some. Um, as Lavelle said, there's some still out there. Um, Dad had said to me as well to bring some, and I totally forgot. And Josh said to bring some cash in, in case somebody wanted any refunds. No refunds are to be given. Um, once you've bought them, you've bought them. Um, but thank you, everybody, for supporting me. I um, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, so thank you. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching. 
thank our sister for the messages and song, and we trust the Lord will bless her as she sings for the Lord. It's great to have a talent to be able to sing for the Lord and to be able to be used in His service. We're turning to the Psalm 23 tonight, and uh, with God's Word open before us, let's bow together just in a word of prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the hymns we've been singing, for the messages and songs that have been sung. And now as we come to thy precious word, we ask thee that you will write it upon each one of our hearts. Cleanse my heart afresh of the precious blood. Fill me afresh with thy Holy Spirit and enable me to preach thy word, for we ask it in Jesus' precious and lovely name. Amen. We're turning to this psalm tonight that we have sung together at the beginning, the Psalm 23. And we want to look at the gospel that I believe is in Psalm 23. And it is a great a psalm that has been greatly blessed down through the years. Our text tonight will be John 10 and verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And the beginning of this psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. What a wonderful part of God's precious word is Psalm 23. King David describes the Lord as his shepherd. Many names are given to Christ in the word of God, the bread of life, the water of life, the door of life. But I believe that the most beautiful of all is Christ portrayed as the shepherd. Psalm 23 is without doubt the best known, best loved of all the Psalms of David. Very few funeral services are conducted without this psalm read or sung for the comfort of the bereaved. Some Bible expositors tell us that King David wrote this psalm while he was on the run from King Saul, wandering from place to place, not knowing where, when Saul would uh, perhaps catch up with him and his death would come. So this shepherd boy who was to become the king of Israel was inspired by God to write this beautiful, touching, comforting psalm. He was directed by the Holy Spirit. And I wonder when David penned this psalm, did he realize how much comfort and help that it would bring to many a weary soul on the journey of life? It is a psalm that touches the heart of man. And let us look now into this wonderful psalm and find just a little of its meaning. For volumes could be written and still never exhaust its beauty and helpfulness to our hearts. Often misused, its message is only for the saved of the Lord, only for those who are the Lord's people. And we want to consider that tonight. And first of all, we want to look at the person who knew the shepherd. David wrote this psalm because he knew the shepherd. My shepherd. Not a shepherd, but the shepherd. And this is not hearsay, nor rumor, nor gossip. But David knew the shepherd personally. And here is assurance, reality, and certainty. Therefore, he could say with assurance that the Lord is my shepherd. David was just an ordinary young man, brought up on a farm, looked after his father's sheep. So ordinary was David that when Jesse, his father, was called by Samuel, the prophet to bring his sons before him, he didn't even bother to bring David, just his seven brothers, to pass before Samuel. And First Samuel 16 and verse 10, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Fetch, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come thither. And yet God had chosen David, the least thought of by his father and by his brothers. And it was only when David came before Samuel that the Lord said, in verse 12 of 1 Samuel, And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all a beautiful countenance and goodly to look at. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. 
David called of God to be his servant and to be king of Israel. Called to be a sheep in the Lord's fold. Truly, David could say, the Lord is my shepherd. Called of God, responded to God's call and was anointed king of Israel. And you and I tonight are only ordinary people just like David. And yet as sinners in God's sight, condemned by the law of God, guilty in God's sight, punishment awaiting us at death, God is calling you to come for forgiveness, seeking to become your shepherd so that you can call the Lord your shepherd. And I wonder how many in the service tonight, and you can truly say, the Lord is my shepherd. Many people read this psalm. I was in a house not so very long ago, and a man was uh, nearing the end of the journey, and uh, he told me that he read Psalm 23 all the time. And I said, that is a tremendous psalm, but it's not for everybody. They looked at me. I said, it's, it's only for those who are saved by God's grace, who have been born again into God's family, and who are sheep in the shepherd's church, the shepherd of the sheep. So you can call the Lord your shepherd if you have come and accepted him as your savior. The only person that can call on the Lord Jesus, my shepherd, is when they are born again into the fold of God and they're in the family of God. John 3 and 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, ye must be born again. If you're not born again, you cannot have the benefit of this psalm. And you know, I want to ask you a personal question tonight. Do you know the shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, as your Savior and your Lord? Are you in his family? Can you look back to a time in your life whenever the Holy Spirit convicted you of your sin? Whenever you realized that you were separated from God by your sin, that you were under the judgment of God for your sin, and that you were on the road to a lost sinner's hell, and you saw Jesus Christ dying on the cross of Calvary to save you from your sin, and you called upon the Lord, and you asked him to forgive your sins, to come into your heart, to cleanse you in his precious blood, and to make you a child of his. And you became a sheep in the fold of the great shepherd. Can you say with David, the Lord is my shepherd. But then secondly, we want to look at the person who was the shepherd. The redeemer. The one who is David's shepherd is none other than the second person of the triune God. The good shepherd. Why? Because he gave his life for the sheep. And John 10 and verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. The Lord Jesus Christ, who David knew personally as his Savior, Redeemer, came into this sin-cursed world to die on the cross to atone for sinners such as you and I. He made a complete sacrifice for all those chosen in Christ Jesus unto eternal life. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Jesus became the Lamb of God, the one who shed his precious blood to become the shepherd of the flock. And John 1 and verse 29, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Do you know the good shepherd personally? The one who gave himself for you on the cross of Calvary. Are you saved? If you're not, you should come tonight and put your trust and faith in the great shepherd of the sheep. Not only the good shepherd, but he's the great shepherd. 
because of this resurrection in Hebrews 13 and verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. The Lamb of God gave his life for the sheep, yet that was not the end, it's just the beginning. Man thought that Jesus was gone forever. Glory to God, Jesus arose again from the dead, brought again by his Father, the mighty God of heaven, to become the great shepherd of the sheep. And today we can call upon Jesus for salvation, knowing of assurance that we will be born again into the fold of the great shepherd who is able to keep us for all eternity. Isn't that tremendous? To realize that when we are saved, we're kept not just for the years down here, but for all eternity. What a shepherd endured the suffering on the cross, the death, I praise God, rose again the third day. He's a good shepherd, the sacrifice redeemer, the great shepherd, the resurrection, the chief shepherd, not the pastor, but the chief pastor. And 1 Peter 5 and 4 and when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Christ appoints pastors and ministers over the flock of God to encourage and feed and to help those that are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Men who are saved by God's grace, called to the office of minister by the Holy Spirit of God. And yet they are only a humble pastor, feeder of the saved of the Lord. We are waiting, awaiting the return of the chief shepherd to appear to put away sin forever, to receive us to himself forever. You see, David knew the Lord as redeemer, purchaser, proprietor. He had a possession of him as one of the sheep, the fold, the preserver of his life, and also in death and in eternity. In verse 4, Ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The person who was the shepherd, the person who knew the shepherd, the personal message of the shepherd, thirdly. What a personal message to David and to all the saved of all ages. All who know Jesus as Savior and can say the Lord is my shepherd. If you know the Lord as your shepherd, you can apply this psalm to every day of your life. Verse 1, I shall not want, isn't that tremendous? Shall not want temporal mercies. He who feeds the birds and the fishes, we shall not want spiritually. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. And you know, that is something in this day and age in which we live in which the world is in a mess from one end to the other. And we often wonder, how are we going to cope? But the psalmist said, I shall not want. And verse 2, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He provides his word as food for our souls, rich, and fresh as green pastures. If you're saved, do you read the Bible every day? Have you read the Bible through? Have you ever started at the beginning or take book by book and mark it off until you have the Bible read through? I trust that you have because it provides food for our souls and it enables us to live the Christian life. In verse 3, He restoreth my soul. Christ binds the broken heart 
comfort to the sad and lonely. And you know, sometimes we do get sad and we do get lonely. Of course, if you live in this modern age that we're living in, nobody ever should be sad. Nobody ever should be downhearted. Everybody should be great on top of the mountain all the time. But what world are they living in? It's not this world because the man's born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. He restoreth my soul. Christ binds the broken heart, brings comfort to the sad and lonely. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake, leading us in the way of holiness. And you know, I've often sat around the doors over the years and come to people and they were cast down and when they talk, they can talk to somebody they don't know. And they unburden their hearts. And I said, you know, when you're down in the dumps, go to your bedroom, close the door, get down on your knees and say, Lord, I'm beat. Help me. And he will. Because he is the great shepherd of the sheep. Verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. It brings us comfort in death. And you know, often, and I'm sure most of you have the same experience, you visited someone and they were about to leave this scene of time to go out into God's eternity. And you wondered how they could be so comfortable. Why? Because they were assured from God's precious word that they would not travel the valley alone. I fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. And imagine that when we close our eyes in death, the Lord Jesus is with us till we land in heaven. We're not going on our own. Oh yes, from a worldly point of view, some people believe that when you die, that's at the end. But not with those that are the sheep and the shepherd's fold. The shepherd goes with us through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Brings us that great comfort in death. Friends are necessary. Yet no one else but our shepherd can fully understand how we feel when death takes a loved one away. And you know, that is something, again, that sometimes people think, oh, there's somebody saved, they're away to heaven. You shouldn't miss them. But we're human, and we do miss our loved ones. Even though we have the assurance that we're going to meet them again in that land that is fairer than day. But thank God we have the comfort that the Lord brings us day by day, the great shepherd of the sheep, because he understands how we feel and you know, no matter how good your husband, your wife, your children, your family, your father, your mother uh, loves you, but they can never understand perhaps how you feel. But there is one that understands exactly how we feel, and that is the Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Speaks of the peace we as Christians should display, even in the presence of our enemies. And the second part of verse 5, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. A fresh anointing of the grace of God daily in our lives. And you know, that is something that we should always appreciate that we come and ask the Lord for a fresh and filling of his Holy Spirit day by day. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I remember reading of a preacher who was a shepherd before his ministry and he said that like two sheepdogs keeping the sheep from danger and straying, goodness and mercy brings us back to the Lord when we stray and when we uh, go away off the track that we should be going. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Dwell in heaven forever, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
Are you saved? Do you know the shepherd? If you do, then there is a day coming when you leave this scene of time and you land on the heavenly shore in heaven. What a day of rejoicing that's going to be when we land on that heavenly shore and meet Christ personally. Oh, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ today through faith. But when we land on that heavenly shore and meet him face to face and thank him for what he did for us on the cross of Calvary. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank God when we get to heaven, we're there forever to be with him personally. I trust tonight that you long to be in the fold of the shepherd. Jesus calls you now tonight. Wherever you are in the church or at home, the call comes to you tonight. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Have you heard the call of God come to your heart? Have you heard him say, come unto me? And have you responded and said, yes, Lord, I'm coming to thee. Cleanse me in your precious blood. Make me a child of thine. Give me eternal life. And he will. But as many as received him, to them give he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And people often wonder, how do you know that you're saved? Well, you know it because God says that he's the door into heaven. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. And if you receive him, as we've already quoted, if you receive him as your Savior, then you enter into his family. And what a tremendous thing it is to have that assurance. And if you have that assurance tonight, do you thank God every day for that assurance? When you waken in the morning, do you say, Lord, thank you for choosing me unto salvation and eternity past. Thank you for dying for me upon the cross of Calvary. Thank you for shedding your precious blood. Thank you for calling me out of sin's darkness into your marvelous light. And you thank him every day for that salvation that he has given you. And then there's a day coming you'll be able to thank him face to face in that land where all the arthritis will be gone and all the p sorrows and all the heartaches that we have down here will be gone forever and we'll be with Christ forevermore. Oh, I trust tonight, if you're saved, then rejoice and thank God every moment of every day for your salvation. And if you're not saved, then I urge you tonight to come and put your trust and faith in him that he will uh, save you and then you can say with assurance that you will be in that land that is fairer than day. And then that psalm, you'll be able to say, he is my shepherd. And write down that psalm, everything, as your own personal uh, help from the shepherd of the sheep. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts tonight. Let's bow together in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we thank thee that thou didst send thine only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus, to be our Savior. And we thank thee that he's the shepherd of the sheep. And we thank thee for each one in the service that's saved by thy grace. Help us always to thank thee and praise thee and worship thee and adore thee for all that thou hast done for us. But for those that are not saved, we ask thee that the Holy Spirit will draw them out of sin's darkness into thy marvelous light and save them by thy mighty power. We ask thee now that you will separate us one from the other and that you will take us to our homes in safety and bless us in the weeks, the days and weeks that lie ahead unto that day that we land with thee on the sh heavenly shore. Part us now with thy blessing in Jesus' precious and lovely name. Amen. Amen.